Catholic faces. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Today is January 28, 2013. The time is 7 p.m. The special meeting of the Anglo Common Council is called to order. At this time, the question all cell phones, pages, any other upcoming questions. Be silenced, please. Yeah, where are you at, Richard? Here. Blake. Here. 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 Jamie. I think he's outside. Daryl. Here. Thank you. I only have one thing, uh, new business for contribution request tonight. I'd like to call Mr. Tom Miller and bring the police first. And what we'll do here, Mr. Tom, to try to get things going, uh, most folks have been here in the past. We'll give you three minutes to make a presentation, and then the council will ask questions. Okay. Thank you. 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 Job description for the student, for the school resource officer um, also has uh, the budget uh, for the salary that Greensburg Schools pays and the uh, memorandum of understanding that we have with local law enforcement with his position. Um, Bruce has served in this capacity for about 12 years. Uh, he's been an employee of Greensburg Schools, I think, for the last uh, four years. Uh, it's been a good relationship for us. Uh, he serves as a liaison with the police department and deals with most of the juvenile uh, concerns that uh, involve students in Greensburg schools. Uh, we, what we're requesting, as we have the last few years, for $5,000 to help with the uh, cost of the student resource officer. Open for any uh, questions you might have. A lot of good information here, Tom. We appreciate that. Council. Everything's pretty much as it has been. It's pretty much here. And yes. And we've just worked on all the we told in the past that uh, this is a great a benefit to our police department, too. We think it's a cooperation for We appreciate the partnership that we have with the Reserve Police Department and with the Decatur County Sheriff's Department. It's a good relationship. I think it's very positive for the community. And in light of all the things that have been happening across the country, we even feel like we're a step ahead of a lot of other communities with the relationship that we have with our SRO and uh, our uh, police departments. The officer couple. Yes. Anything else, Council? What we're going to do uh, here on the tonight and the other some contributions is the Council will look at what they've been presented and make a final decision at the uh, this coming next Monday's council meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Uh, next item is Bev Perzia, Big Brothers and Big Sisters. Basically, uh, the reason that we're coming to City Council is Again, our numbers keep growing. We keep increasing the number of children that we um, have in our programs, and we do maintain the high quality and standards of interviewing, supervision, and screening of our mentors. Um, we have had um, a major change in our um, uh, funding for next year. We uh, did not receive, the state has um, eliminated uh, one of the grants that we received, and that was a $15,000 grant that we've received for the last two years. Um, this year, um, it is not available. So, um, again, uh, we don't know. Our, well, for kids' sake, is our major fundraiser. Uh, we don't know year by year what we will um, receive there. We have um, in our budgets uh, last year when we uh, budgeted. It, um, uh, uh, 60. And this year it will be 70. Um, so we are, un, you know, we are looking, and we did well last year. That's why um, we did not come back. You know, we <coughs> asked for more and um, agreed on the lesser amount. And had 
the option to come back if we needed to. And uh, we didn't feel that we, need, we did really well. Um, however, this is, we've budgeted high this year. Um, this is what we received last year, is what you can see in the budget. Um, basically just deals with the fact that the number of, number of children we're helping has increased by the 19% from last year, I believe. And, and uh, the lack of grant, just the funding and grant is hard to come by these days, as everyone knows. Uh, the 15000 was a big hit. And then, uh, of course, expenses with utilities and so forth, they keep going. So, uh, and we're, we are trying to still we're doing the 5k this will be our third year doing that we're still trying to go out and try to come up with ways to help help fund our operations so we're not just sitting back and requesting money we're actually tr still trying to help being proactive in that nature so i really thought the way you did last year was to be commended uh, you only asked for what you needed at the end of the year needed to get by council <coughs> couple of clarifying questions. One, in the uh, grants for this year, you noted that the DFCO, Department of Child Services, then you got DCCF and another line item. What's the difference between those two, DCCF and? DCFCO, that's the division of um, uh, Department of Child Services, and the DCCF <coughs> is the uh, Cato County Community Foundation. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, and then the other question, you know, I know that we have, the city, uh, the city has been on, uh, regularly supporting <coughs> Big Brothers Big Sisters. Have you, have you asked or have you any plans to ask uh, the county, because you do serve county, right, or you just serve city? Yes, we have, we have school programs in all yeah. of the schools in the county. Yeah. Yeah. We do receive. That goes into our rent. So we're approximately about forty eight hundred to five thousand a year. <coughs> and that has been ongoing for seven years. But it's not listed here. Or is it? I think it's netted out of our rent, I believe. Yeah, I don't say a rent in your expenses. Oh, that's under occupancy. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, when it's listed, then Yeah, so it's basically a net, net effect. We pay $1,200 a year. And they pay the rest. Where are you have? It's in the, uh, on, on 421 South. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, also, that was $135,000 loan last year. 
in Decatur County total, we did $100,000. So, you know, it's very cyclical um, by, by region, by, by business type. You know, um, we met with myself and then Brian and Mark, uh, the mayor as well, met with the local bank and uh, they, along with a number of others, are uh, uh, working hard to, to, uh, to move into the SBA loans. There's a couple of new, new packages available. So I, I think in, uh, in 2013, we'll be able to see some more starts. Um, we were, we did sort of shift then as a result of that to working with um, existing businesses. So I worked a little bit more with established businesses looking to grow. And that's where you can see we saw a 45% uh, increase in jobs um, over the year. Um, we also were able to meet with more people. But again, since the uh, it was a little bit more difficult to, to get those starts, uh, it, it resulted in a little bit fewer um, total hours met with those clients. Um, we uh, basically did all the, all the same things we've been doing. We worked with every uh, uh, community organization we could. We worked with Work One, we worked with Main Street. Uh, specifically, we worked with them on uh, starting a uh, small revolving loan program here in, in Greensburg that uh, was successful in getting a few, a few loans out to, uh, to local businesses. Um, and worked with Matter Challenge, uh, the, uh, the uh, Business Professionals of America uh, competition. Um, and we also, and I think this is maybe the most significant um, change from last year, we've started working uh, closely with the Lawrenceburg 10 County Grant Fund on doing uh, their financial analysis for the packages that come through to ensure um, that the projects you folks are sending in, that uh, EECs are sending in, are uh, viable, realistic projects, just sort of an outside vetting that protects uh, cities, counties, and Working closely with them to help the whole program. Um, we came in after uh, the, you know, the files, the FBI requested. So just, so. Um, and that's. Any questions? Uh, we're requesting the same five thousand dollars. Five thousand. asking for match money from NDOT, from what NDOT gives us uh, to, because of the cities and the counties, uh, we're just asking for extra money. So do they, does NDOT have a fixed amount that they will contribute if it's matched? They give us... I think 
has set the budget in uh, for 2013 between the grants that we get from the federal and the state and the other money <coughs> and revenue share and matching. We're still like $70,000, 377 in the hole of trying to get our match. Does MDOT contribute any? Yes, they do. Where's that listed at? That's under the federal and the state grants there. It's under the 5311 and 5310. On my budget page. On the last page. Okay. <clears throat> so, Mike, what are you saying the NDOT matches what the city's sort of gives? Well, NDOT gives us an amount, and then we ask uh, in order to meet our budget, uh, we ask the cities and the, and the counties to help us out to meet our budget. Because right now we're uh, in the, throughout all the counties that we serve in, we're $70,377. So there's no matching though. So the NDOT doesn't match what the city agrees for. Correct. It's just the NDOT yes. a set. They just give us a set amount and then we I ask think. for monies to try to match some of the monies to pay. Yeah. I don't know for sure, but I would assume that what they're looking at is they're looking at local participation so that they are not paying for something that the locals would not want. So if, if we're willing to support it, then they feel that I think they can have confidence that indeed we believe we're being served, so therefore their grant is worthwhile. It's mean, going to something that's a value. That's, I guess, how I would make sure to be very true that it, 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 is, it, is the state of Indiana putting any money in it, or is that Indiana and the, the federal government? It's both Indiana and, and, and then Indiana. And then Indiana and Dodd will charge the admin fee for the I don't know what they charge, but in terms of the budget here, you've got $900,000 coming from the Fed, you got three hundred. dollars Thirty-five thousand dollars coming from the state, and other grants of twenty-nine. Um, they charge back for the medical rides to Medicaid. They got donations, income. I don't know what local restricted revenue is. That unrestricted local match. I guess that's where our money comes in. Yeah, that's that's where. That's where our money comes in of, of uh, fifty. My question is, why is that? Budget last year, the local matches, they're calling them match, but it's really a local contribution, um, it was like $97,000, and this year it's almost $54,000. Why is it significant? Um, we've got uh, one of the counties that we serve in right now, uh, they're, the county or the city in Jennings County is not helping us, and they were helping us last year. So they've cut a tremendous amount of our budget, which is kind of putting us in a more of a deficit this year. But you still service those communities, correct? Exactly. Um, and I, you also ask not only here, but the county also supports. Yes, the county still Same amount, of five thousand dollars. Uh, they they usually give us eight. So yeah. eight. How is your total number of uh, trips compared to the year before? Are you, were you up this year? Um, we were up by a little over a thousand trips uh, since we, I know in Greensburg and Decatur County, uh, we changed from point deviation to demand response back in September. I see. And, uh, our trips actually have doubled since September to previous months. Uh, since we changed it, so it's been uh, a good increase. Thank you. I have one other question. You said how many people you serve? I mean, I know the number of uh, rides that the so riders. Is it one way trip or two way trip? And it's 14,000 rides. 
those that is um, every trip we do, whether it's one or two way or just one single trip. You know what I mean? Okay, so so the person that gets on and goes to the doctor, the person gets on to the doctor's office and comes back and goes home. Is that two trips or one? That's two trips. And so how many people do you say you serve here? 220. So that's what I heard about that this year. Okay. Any questions, Council? Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, uh, Mr. Diane Moore. Congratulations. Hi. Um, I'm Diane Moore, Executive Director for New Directions. And um, I included several charts along with uh, the funding request responses. And I just feel like it's important for you and other residents of the community to realize how much our agency has grown. At least that's my belief in the last two years. And the charts I provided, I try to expand on that. And we're also one of the few agencies that provides services totally for free, as well as we have staff that are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And um, it does take a lot of um, time and energy uh, to serve the victims of domestic violence in our community. But I think we've seen very significant growth. Um, the chart, at the bottom of um, the first set of charts, um, it shows the number of primary and secondary victims served by our agency. A primary <coughs> victim is whoever has contacted us that's been um, a victim of abuse. The secondary victims are generally speaking the children, although sometimes it's another relative that's living in the home. And you can see at that chart, um, prior to 2012, our largest year for primary and secondary victims was 2001, where we served a total of 30. Um, in 2011, we served 161, and this past year, 318. And um, it's been with a lot of energy, a lot of assistance. I have two part-time victims advocates now um, that <coughs> help tremendously. The chart at the top of that page shows the number of victims who receive services each month. In uh, 2011, I was averaging 11 a month. Now we're up to between 23 and 24 a month. Um, the next page shows how much outreach we have through our website. Um, I don't know what's happening on our website. Uh, the hits are really ex exploding. I'm up to over 700 uh, for this month, almost at 800. Um, you can see how that is consistently uh, doing well, and people can log on there. They can even take a quiz to find out what level of danger um, they are currently in. Um, and then we have a lot of information about our services. Um, I also prepared a chart for you about grant funding. I'm trying to show you that I am trying to work diligently to find more grant money out there. Um, I went back to 2010 where our level was 26,000. It reached to um, 61,000 in 2011. I grew that to over 80,000 in 2012. Um, I also sometimes uh, talk with people that think maybe we should be using volunteers more. I uh, did a comparison chart on volunteers for our agency. I went back to 2009. Back at that point, we only had 18 volunteers and they logged 550 hours. We're now up to 103 volunteers uh, that worked with our agency last year alone, and they logged 1,327 and a half hours. So we're trying to do the best we can to find ways that it's the most cost efficient to provide services, but the bottom line is our expenses have grown because our clientele has grown. And
I'll just say that you know it's it's sad that your numbers are up on one hand, but I do applaud you for uh, being there and uh, and taking care of the situation for the community. I, I just have one question: the monies that you receive, um, do they stay in Decatur County? Uh, Every penny stays in Decatur County. Okay. We do occasionally have a situation where somebody comes to us. They may know law enforcement in the Batesville area or some of the staff members at Safe Passage. And a lot of times people are embarrassed that they are being abused. Sure. Occasionally, very occasionally. I would say in the last year, I had maybe two or three clients out of the 151 um, that were from a neighboring community. But, I mean, the only way you could consider our dollars going out of the county is occasionally we have to do a transport. I see. And that's sure. the only time. And once in a while, if I'm correct, you do take some clients to Batesville. Uh, we have not done that, but we lean on them heavily. Um, it, it, the year before, we had a situation. A lot of times, a victim is safe as long as she's not in her own four walls at home or whatever you want to call it. And but sometimes the abuser is so, and it's not always men abusers, the abuser is so, so uh, engaged in the abuse that they stalk. And the year before last, we transferred someone to Batesville because they knew where our agency was. And, um, but I work very closely with the executive director at Safe Passage for mentorship. Question. Do you send a class to Columbus? We have never sent a client since I've been there to turn the point. We have a very good working relationship with Safe Passage and with the Jennings County um, Advocates Against Domestic Violence. So we kind of mentor back and forth with them. We do a lot of little other things too. I mean, if we have a client who um, the abuser has maybe been put in jail or has um, left um, and they're able to stay in their home, uh, but perhaps he's taken a key with him, we will help get new locks so that that client has a level of safety. If she has had a, a, a window busted out of her car or something like that, we will get that fixed. Um, there's a lot that goes into just keeping them safe, keeping them, you know, if, if they have a job or something and they can't get back in the residence to like maybe get their work clothes or work shows or shoes or something, we will um, take them to Walmart and get them whatever they need so that they can keep their jobs. We do a lot of little things besides just uh, court accompaniments and um, providing uh, services in that way. In fact, uh, we have 75 different um, services that we track um, and we're required to track them for a grant that I just got from the Indiana Criminal Justice Institute. With um, not only grants, but looking at the fundraising, right? Yeah, of course, it's Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Diane. On the agenda is Mr. Mark Coughlin, the Great Educator of Canada and the Local Corporation. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for considering the Economic Development Corporation's request for funding tonight. Uh, it will be the same as it was last year. I think common sense tells us that uh, diversity in our public finances, or in our even in our personal finances, uh, is is a good way to go about doing business. We don't want to have all of our eggs in one basket. Uh, the same way in economic development. We should have a diversified program there. And, and this year, uh, in the recruitment area, it started off up till about uh, halfway through the year looking pretty strong. Uh, then around election time, a little bit later, we had three companies that are good examples to say, well, we're just sort of wait and see now, and, and you folks uh, know this. Uh, well, there was Menards, of course, and there is a, uh, uh, an aluminum processing company 
would be a huge capital investment, 77 employees, highly paid, that are looking and have been looking at uh, ourselves and Scott County, Scottsburg. Um, also, there was a food processor that was looking at our company, at, at our community, and they are in wait and see mode right now. However, in the expansion area of companies here in Greensburg, particularly manufacturers, I think we had a great year. Hitachi Powdered Metals expanded 60 new permanent manufacturing jobs. That was publicized. What's not publicized, and, and you can't forget, is that they'll be hiring, in addition to that, another 100 employees that will be contingent temporary, as they call them, on a full salary basis. And as the business continues to grow, they will put those people into full time with salary and benefits. So that's 160 jobs. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be with uh, the mayor and a couple of council representatives when we went to talk with Valio to let to uh, thank them for their expansion, to let them know how we'll continue to work with them in the future. And Valio is committed to 209 jobs now. Uh, in addition to the expansion area and recruitment, we work some with small and emerging businesses. There's one right now we're working with in Westport. It's uh, EMS Fasteners is the name of it. A nice small business for, for Westport. We'll have about eight positions at the end of 2013. So you add that up. And we've got 377 committed manufacturing jobs. And we can't forget Honda either. That was uh, another 350 jobs that they're hiring right now. So the total in expansions is 727 manufacturing jobs in this community. And I've heard people say at at, from time to time, well, we'll never have the manufacturing. We'll never have that base that we used to. At this pace, we may not. At this pace, we'll have more. And I hope we do. And I'll work toward that. Thank you, Mr. Carver. Gentlemen? Yeah. Yeah. Questions for Mr. Carver? Uh, just one quick question. Uh, what's other income? What are you know, the things that? We're going to do a auto expo this year that you are probably more familiar with than I am. Uh, the last one was done a couple years ago here. It was successful uh, to highlight, demonstrate uh, the manufacturing excellence of automotive uh, in Greensburg and Decatur County. Each year, we have uh, 
some high school students and Head Start students were getting used uh, by business. COVA comes in and uses us. Uh, as everybody knows, Honda uses us a lot. Uh, that's helpful. Almost every person that's been hired at Honda has come through uh, this building at least twice. Uh, they come for an interview and then, I mean, they come for a testing and then they, if they do well at that, they come for an interview. Um, so we benefit when they ramp up. Um, the other thing we, we've talked a lot about lately is where our students are going and Mark talked a lot about bringing in manufacturing jobs. We also want to fill those second level jobs too. So those people who are already uh, engaged in manufacturing profession can move up a level. Um, those people who want to get manufacturing jobs maybe aren't quite ready yet. There are an awful lot of refresher courses that, and we find more and more each year <coughs> taking that. People have been away from school for 10 or 15 years and all of a sudden realize they have to go and take a tape test or take other maths and English tests. And uh, we can help them with that and also put them on to a college track, uh, which is going to benefit them. And, and again, it, it benefits the city and, and everyone around us for everything that we have to offer. You know, for those of you who haven't been in the center lately, it looks fantastic. We have a 100-person meeting room, uh, full-foot screen, carpet, new tables. We've been able to redo uh, 12 classrooms with all new desks and chairs. We've also set up uh, each teacher station with a hardwired computer as we brought internet into all the rooms as well as wireless. Uh, and they were able to put their lessons on a 55-inch television behind them. As everyone knows, we have to keep up with technology. Even a projector is it's essentially last century technology. People want to come in with their thumb drive, plug it into a computer, and teach a lesson. Uh, if they see it somewhere else, they expect it here. And I think people came and got it here, and now they expect it in other places. So uh, your help each year keeps that going. Um, we're, we're very grateful. And as I said, we do keep costs down in order not to ask for a lot. There's, uh, some communities have very extravagant learning centers. Uh, probably been to some of them. Uh, that's not what we're after. We're just after uh, being able to help the people who come. And we have 300 of them now every year. And if we need more, there's some expansion possibilities that we could bring class in the daytime. Hasn't really caught on because uh, we cater to non-traditional learners. Those people who've been out of school for a while, come back, decide they want to go. Most of those people work in the afternoons. Uh, we're also in some discussions to bring some other adult education classes, whether they be economic development based or more of uh, pre-college, uh, finishing high school classes. Uh, all that's in discussion, but we're there for adults who need education, whether it be a two-week training course or, you know, to continue their lifelong learning. Okay, thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. Questions, Council? I just have a comment, I think, from the trip to Detroit. Robert Hill's value. I was asking a question about the Army Center. Yeah, there was some, I would have to say that in the past there had been a different level of engagement um, from corporations and coming through tuition reimbursement and some other things. I think uh, as, as business owners are, are focused on their own fiscal buildup, getting back from what we all went through, uh, that's job one. And then secondly, I think, because they're all well aware of us. They used to send the students all the time and they even pay for them to go to classes there. We're probably not on the front of their mind because they've had other issues. But They'll trickle back in. And yeah, we were able to talk about the soft skills program. It's sure. And I think it was important for that bigger uh, their investment going further in the future with the city of Great. And, and I think we, we all saw that. I mean, eight years ago, seven years ago, whatever it was when Honda came, they made their announcement from the Learning Center. I mean, they were sending messages there, and they've been a partner hand in hand with us ever since. And I have monthly training classes for Honda in the building. One question on your little um, financial report page. You got uh, rent and then donations. Uh, is that donations? Is that what includes would include us yes. in terms of uh, the payment that we made last yes. year? That, that's exactly what it came from. And and money in the county gives. All in the county. Okay. In previous years, we received other donations. They were often earmarked for a certain project. <coughs> we have nearly $30,000 to build a, a brand new computer lab. Uh, again, new furniture, 
computers, uh, everything from carpeting. Yeah. So in, in previous years, we've had more money coming in. Right. Uh, and I, it that's seems not as available. This was like this was twenty one two fifty. Mm -hmm. Have a question, Jim. Um, what could, for example, I be tech to do for, let's say, a large employer such as Honda in Columbus or Batesville to train that we couldn't do in Greensburg at the Roots? For a specific employer, I don't think there's anything they, they couldn't do. Um, Their classes outside of normal curriculum, math, English, science, history, those type of classes are, are, are driven by uh, corporate need. So if, if somebody here locally was to approach me or to approach Ivy Tech and said, I have a dozen students who want to take XYZ, I don't imagine it would take more than a few weeks to get that class up. I think we found, for whatever reason, and we've had these discussions, in certain other communities, uh, companies may be more engaged directly with the educational process. Um, and in that case, they have a, a daily working relationship with an Ivy Tech. But I think if there was a need here, uh, Ivy Tech would be welcome to. They've, they've twice tried to put a corporate liaison, used to be called Workforce Economic Development, web uh, a liaison to that arm here. And they've attempted to make inroads at, at, at different workplaces within the community. Um, haven't been as successful, uh, probably not for lack of effort. So I don't think there's, there's any, there's no request going on that. Uh, just not a whole lot of requests. Yeah. So, Jim, I read the newspaper here, we were so good. Uh, you know, a large contribution is made to Ivy Tech. And you know, I'm a little bit envious of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we're, we are lacking what our facilities or companies need, we need to know that's going to be to try to come and you know, we accept those contribution savings that you can place elsewhere. And I sure wouldn't want them to try to talk uh, companies here in Greensburg to go to face for our Columbus. Yeah, and, and I think the, there, there is a little bit of a difference in facility. You've been to the Learning Center in Columbus, it, like an airport. They have, you know, electronic doors in there. I mean, it's a, it's a different place and, and a, a different type of atmosphere, and, and that can be a draw obviously to some people, um, but I think a lot of that just has to do with the relationships, the ongoing conversations that they have with, with people in different regions. And, uh, they're, they're, I mean, I, we don't have a, a welding kit, per se. I mean, uh, so we, could, we couldn't do a class like that. But for the most part, the types of classes, and, and Honda does, they bring somebody in and they actually teach the classes at the learning center. They do a lot of that on their own. But anytime somebody's made a request, I, I don't, whether it be an MSSC class or, or others, there's no reason we wouldn't be able to fill that for them. Thank you. Any good questions, Council? Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. <coughs> David Myers, Main Street, Greensburg. And Mr. Brian Robbins, Executive Director of Main Street. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. We, uh, on behalf of Main Street Greensburg, would like to thank you for giving us this opportunity to make this uh, funding request to you again, as we've done for, for several years. Uh, we've been very appreciative of what you have given to us in the past and has made our organization successful in <coughs> as it has. And we're very proud of that. I think we've accomplished a lot of things in the last several years, and we wouldn't have been able to do that without your support. But I would like to turn this uh, rostrum over here to Brian Robbins, so that he can fill you in on some details and some activities that we're doing. We'll kind of sum it up in, in uh, uh, three minutes, I guess, or less. Uh, you guys should have a copy of some of the accomplishments that we had last year. Some of those to point out was the uh, first running of the Fisher Five Mile, uh, very important big wheel race. The goal, so it turned out to, through the Go Greensburg project that the city applied for. Uh, turned out into a great event downtown in the spring. We were leading an uh, event downtown that, that uh, had great participation. We plan to do it again this year and possibly turn it into a fundraiser. Uh, the farmer's market, we take care of that. Uh, we did get a grant uh, late last year from the USDA to start accepting SNAP benefits um, and make, making uh, those transactions out there to the farmer's market. Unfortunately, I think there's, I think it's one in six per people now uh, receive 
uh, SNAP benefits, it might even be higher than that. Uh, we want to make sure that that money, uh, all due respect to the Circle K and Speedways, they come and uh, they come through lo stay local as possible uh, through buying some of the food uh, and more nutritious food, I might add, at our farmers market. So we think that's a great facility uh, and an outlet for that that, that program. Um, also, we, we completed our second full year of the Second Friday movie series um, downtown on the courthouse lawn. Um, we put on the holiday walk this this, uh, this winter, um, as well as the Santa House that worked well on, again in the, in the courthouse atrium. Um, and along with the same uh, lines during the holidays, we launched a, a buy local campaign uh, to get from Greensburg, uh, which was met with, with uh, a nice reception um, from the merchants. We also do the winter market with your help here in uh, the gymnasium, which continues to do well. We have new vendors every each and every time. It's still uh, the purest form of, I should say, entrepreneurship that there is, uh, both farmers markets. And it's great that we have a facility in cooperation with uh, the city to be able to put that on uh, each second Saturday of the month. Um, um, Eric alluded to it um, somewhat. He uh, was help, helpful as well as the Chamber and the EEC in, in leveraging last year uh, over $70,000 for our uh, revolving loan program downtown. Um, we took the existing funds and actually like, leveraged additional funds to that allows us to loan to, um, uh, to, to greater needs of operating costs in addition to, to building improvements as well as uh, uh, inventory and that. Um, again, just one of those things in the long uh, process that we've been working towards to make uh, downtown Greensburg a great place to do business and one that's very um, uh, friendly to business and supportive of, of local businesses. Um, and probably uh, the biggest <coughs> thing uh, that's not only uh, we worked, I worked on it much last year, but also in the uh, future is the housing tax credit project for the uh, old YMCA. Apartment complex um, over there next to the YMCA and the apartment complex on South Franklin Street. Um, it's a potential for an $8 million project against this, <coughs> this is contingent on, on uh, tax credits from the Indiana Housing Community Development Authority. Uh, Main Street has received uh, support from the Landmarks Foundation to help um, in the planning and the um, engineering of that project, um, even if it is not funded. But uh, we all hope that you know, it does get funded, and, and the city has been uh, very cooperative in, in that as well. Um, I think it really stands to uh, uh, going to be a, a big, uh, a big boost to, to downtown. Uh, what I handed out there uh, is the stats for economic development. Um, we were formed as an economic development uh, organization, <coughs> community development. And you can see there in economic development, uh, we, we still are very much on the plus side uh, each and every year. Uh, oh, in looking at that, um, businesses relocating, that's not always a bad thing. I think downtown is a fantastic uh, place to launch your business as a small business. If you grow and you have to move out of downtown, you know, we are happy to help you. We'd love to have you stay, but we understand that business is a business and, and uh, growth is a good thing. So when they say business is relocating out, that's not always a bad, bad thing. Also, business is closing um, downtown, especially when you're uh, working with downtown communities, you have issues of retirement, which is, which is something that we had with uh, many years of the process, and, and uh, wooden bench. Uh, not necessarily econ economic, uh, although they do play somewhat of a part in it, but sometimes it's just sheer one to retire, and every business owner has, has its, has, uh, is, uh, to retire. So, questions, Council? Right. The uh, locating, relocating out, to have all of them relocated within Greensburg? Um, yes. Uh, as, as I go through, um, take, uh, take expressions, yes. Yeah, some of them have re relocated. Yes, I, I, yeah. I would almost say almost all of them have stayed in Decatur now. So. Yeah, if not all, I would say all. Yeah, we 
really try to get people launched. To, we, again, I, I see downtown as, a, as a, an entrepreneurship center, so some that people can start their business. Uh, and uh, working with Eric, working with, with Mark and, and Jeff at the Chamber, I think we have a, a very good team that can really accommodate people, especially in more so now with, as you mentioned, the, the, the banks that are now willing to, willing to participate. I, I must say with our revolving loan programs, uh, local banks have been incredibly uh, supportive of, of setting up uh, those and, and uh, contributing. So uh, I really encourage uh, when people do have small businesses that they want to launch or even ideas, whether it's in downtown or outside of downtown, uh, we'd like to be a, a one-stop shop. I like the last board of directors to get all these. So we have young people coming along. It's interesting to watch the conversations as well. And, uh, and I'd like to say in our organization, we do everything from giving out revolving loans to uh, uh, changing the decorations downtown. So we try to do a little bit of everything. So, anything else, Council? Thank you, Brian. Thanks. Uh, Melissa Poison, Red Flag. I am not Melissa Poison. <laughs> uh, I'm Kim Porter and I'm her administrative assistant. And Karen Hangabotham sits on our board. And um, so this is our first time to request money from the city. Um, the Greensburg Bread of Life is a soup kitchen um, that's been open since 2002. And, um, we assist um, the jobless, the homeless, um, the working poor, elderly that are on a fixed income, or families who just come across a hardship um, due to an illness or maybe they lost a job or just something has happened. Um, they don't really have to fill out a whole lot of paperwork to specific application and be pinned on their honesty. And they are found out if they aren't honest. Um, we also partner with um, Decatur County um, with businesses as far as food rescue 